My fair citizens of Sodium City, today we are going to go over the April 2021 State of the Game. I hear there's some juicy stuff in here, so let's find out. And if you're unfamiliar with State of the Game, it's basically a monthly thing that WotC puts out on their website. It's almost like a newsletter. It just announces um, things like what's coming up with the new set, uh, ban and restricted announcements, um, just all various things coming from features to concerns that the community has and everything in between. So let's stop messing around, just jump right into it. All right, so the state of the game. The new Strixhaven School of Mages set released on April 15th. Uh, that's fantastic. That's in about a week from now um, of the time of the release of this video, which is super, super cool. Uh, so school will soon be in session. All right, getting into character, I guess. Uh, get ready for a new plane. Okay, so the school is actually a new plane. That I did not know. I thought it was on an existing plane like Dominaria or something like that. Um, several new mechanics and a library full of ancient and powerful spells. We already have powerful spells. <laughs> Go away, Eldraine. Uh, like every new set, <laughs> it also brings new packs to the store. Of course, they're like... First, before we tell you anything, let's tell you about how much money we're going to take from you. Uh, new draft and a sealed formats. So that's, that's always good for some people. Uh, and exciting new events. I like exciting new events. Uh, Strixhaven is known for its five colleges, Silverquill, Weatherbloom, Quandrix, Prismari, and Lorehold. Um, you can read more about Harry Potter and take a quiz to find out which Hufflepuff you are. It gives a fuck. Uh, choose whatever method you prefer, um, but you will want to pick your favorite college in the first few weeks because the College Cup is coming up. What the fuck is a College Cup? These are actually really cool. I'm definitely going to be Orzov because Orzov is still like one of my favorite guilds ever. Um, and probably still is my favorite guild. I do really like Golgari, but I think Orzov is still probably my favorite. Um, okay, so Orzov is Silver Quill. Golgari is Witherbloom. I guess that makes sense. Uh, Simic is Quandrix. Izzet is Prismari. And Boros is Lorehold. Make your mark. The College Cup. Okay, what is this? The Colleges of Strixhaven has always competed fiercely. Uh, and a few weeks after the set launches, this competition will come to MTG Arena. A series of events will challenge players to compete in various formats and represent their college of choice. Interesting. So they're actually going to be pinning players against each other of different colleges. That's actually kind of cool. I wonder how they're going to execute that. It's super interesting. Yeah, uh, I don't know if they took that from another game or another idea or something. That's actually a really, really cool idea um, to see like what school uh, is the highest rating in Mythic on average or something like that. That would be interesting. Probably not going to do that. It'll probably be more tournament type setting, uh, but we'll see. There will be three ways to score points for your favorite college. Oh, they're going to explain it right now. Uh, during these events, adding sleeves to your deck. The college sleeves are available from the Harry Potter quiz above. Okay, so you have to fucking do the quiz in order to get the sleeves. Got it. Uh, using an avatar from your college. Okay. Uh, available from the mastery web. Okay. Uh, and bringing the tome from your college, uh, the pet available through the mastery pass. Okay, so you have to purchase this. Um, so you have to do a fucking quiz. You, uh, the mastery web is done through the mastery, easier and faster to do through the mastery pass, and then the pet is available through the mastery pass, uh, which I think is the one you get when you purchase the mastery pass initially. It's not through the leveling system. Uh, the more items you bring, the more points your college will score. So it's pay to win. 
Uh, at the end of the competition, all players will receive a reward commemorating Victorious College. Make sure to compete, represent your classmates well, push your college to victory. All right, so we get a reward. Um, anybody who wants to join, I will be Silver Quill for sure. Um, maybe we'll just take the quiz like right now. Return of the Sealed Arena Open. Uh, the College Cup isn't only a competition coming with the release of Strixhaven. We'll also be running another Arena Open on May 8th and 9th. Uh, so all you super competitive people out there, that's important. Just like last time, this one will be using a sealed format. Uh, we saw an incredible response to Kaldeheim Sealed Arena Open. True, a lot of people really liked it. Uh, and we think Strixhaven School of Mages is a mystical archive will make for an even more exciting sealed environment. That's actually going to be really interesting and probably kind of fucked up. I wonder, I wonder what the power level is going to be like that. Because if somebody has a sealed, like an obscene sealed packs, and gets one or two of those mystical archives, they could just run away uh, with their whole, with their whole pool. That's going to be interesting. I wonder, I wonder what that's going to be like. Interesting. I mean, I guess if people already get obscenely good packs in sealed, they already do really well. But the mystical archives, I mean, they're like arena historic specific at that point. They're really, really strong. So uh, I don't know how it's going to quote unquote break limited in any way. Uh, it may just come down to the point where if you have a mystical archive call card, you just win. But I guess we'll see. Similar to Kaldeheim, we will be running our normal best of one sealed event a bit longer. Uh, right up until the arena open, so people have a good venue to practice. That's really, really smart. Um, expanding on what we did in Kaldeheim, we will be starting the best of three sealed right alongside best of one, and it will also run until the open. We saw a promising response to the best of three sealed with Kaldeheim. We are interested in offering it for a... For... Okay, offering it for longer. See if it holds up. Whichever mode you prefer, you will have the right events available to give you practice and experience to go into the arena open with confidence. It's really good. They're actually encouraging people a little bit more to participate in the arena open, which I think will bring more eyes um, to the arena open in general, which may increase the monetary value of it, may get more sponsors and stuff like that. So it could be very, very good. Um, but I'm actually interested in how many people participate in this. Uh, so anyone who's watching this video, if you're actually going to participate in the Sealed Arena Open, let me know in the comments section below. I'd be really interested to find out. Campus Guide. Uh, as one of the most prestigious schools of the magical thought in the multiverse, Strixhaven has several new things to teach us. You can study up on all the new card mechanics in detail, but read for some notes on how these will play out in MTG Arena. So mana value is a new term but familiar mechanic Means the exact same thing that converted mana cost always has. Oh. In fact, all the cards that use the same converted mana cost, like Elspeth Conquers Death, Drown and Lock, or Fatal Push, now say mana value instead of converted mana cost. Okay. So exile target creature with the mana value of four or less. Or three or greater. Whatever it ends up being. Interesting. I wonder why they changed that. It's just because less characters. Uh, I guess it makes more sense. It's easier to understand, I suppose. That's fair. It's a decent change. I don't really, I don't really have any thoughts against it. Converted mana cost has just been around for so long. But if you say CMC, most people reduce it to CMC. And a lot of people, if they're relatively new, they don't know what CMC is. I remember when I first got back into Magic a couple years ago, I think for the first like five or six months, like people would say CMC and I didn't know what it was, but I didn't really ask. Um, it was kind of inferred in some ways, but I was never 100% sure. Uh, they're like, oh, that's a weird CMC or something random like that. And I didn't quite understand what they were talking about. Um, so... Uh, mana value, if they just say, hey, it's the mana value. You're, it makes a lot more sense if you know anything about magic. You know how much mana you're paying for a card, the mana value. That's It's a lot easier to understand. Next one's learning lessons. This is a really interesting mechanic. 
Uh, learn is a new keyword action that lets you discard a card to draw a card, or more interestingly, reveal a lesson card from your sideboard and put it into your hand. Lesson is a new type of card in Strixhaven that provides you with a wide variety of effects that can call when you need to. So essentially, anytime you play a card that has learn on it, you can then go into your sideboard to find a lesson card and put it into your hand. This is both great and bad. Um, it sucks that it does take up cards in your sideboard if you want to run these. And since the original cards that have learn on them, will also end up being a little bit underpowered because it has the ability to fetch something from sideboard. Uh, it really kind of depends on the overall power of the lesson cards. If they're going to add more lesson cards in future sets, uh, I don't know about that either. But uh, from the lesson cards that I've seen so far, they're pretty underwhelming, but some of them are really powerful. I'm just more in general worried about them taking up uh, slots in the sideboard because if you're running four cards in the main deck that have learn or eight cards You know a play set of two cards then that's Maybe eight cards in sideboard that you're going to be getting which is ridiculous um, So I don't know if you're really going to run that many learn cards uh, Because I don't think you're gonna want to use that many slots in sideboard for lesson cards I don't think there's that many good ones that you're gonna want you know, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of each. It's, I don't think it's going to be good. I don't think you want to fill your entire sideboard with lesson cards. It's just not going to be that good. It's not, it's definitely not going to be that good. This new mechanic has prompted two important changes to MTG Arena. First, you can now view your sideboard mid match to check which lessons or other cards you have available there. Okay, that's kind of cool. I mean, I was using an add on anyway, untap.gg. So I didn't really have a problem with that, um, but you can just click on your library uh, and then you will find a button to switch viewing to your sideboard. Okay, so it's kind of like when you get prompted to get something from uh, your hand, your library, or your graveyard, or opponent's graveyard, or your graveyard, you have little buttons on the right hand side. So that's cool. Uh, second, there are more changes coming detailed below. I think adding additional features of people being able to see more of their deck is always nice uh, without them having to write down their sideboard or always having another tab open with their deck list in it. Um, I think that's a good improvement just in general. I, I really like that. Um, I guess it had to be done for this in a way for these lesson cards, but it's a it's just really good quality of life for sure. Changes to best of one sideboards. What? Starting with Strixhaven release on April 15th, constructed best of one matches will use a seven card sideboard. What? Best of three matches will continue to use 15 card sideboards. What? 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 All right, so anytime you're running Fae of Wishes, um, Naked Karen, Mastermind's Acquisition, or something else that fetches from sideboard, it's going to be a lot more, or a lot less impactful. It's going to be a lot shittier. Hmm, how do I feel about this? I don't think it's good, because you're limiting a lot of options. You already have a lot less options when you're playing best of one. Uh, but then again, that's by design. So I kind of get it. I'm trying to think back to a lot of the decks that I've played in the past that actually have a sideboard. How many times do I get a variety of cards? Like once I build a deck out of 50 games that I play and I fetch things out of sideboard, how many different cards do I actually get? Do I get more than seven different cards from that sideboard? Obviously, if I'm not double casting it or something, because if I double cast it or triple cast it, whatever, I can just take out cards for no reason at all. Um, so that's that part's not applicable. That's just kind of a flex more than anything else. Um, but normally, I don't think I really ever get seven cards out of sideboard. It is like it, it's nice to have that flexibility, though, of being able to get any of the 15 cards. 
um, that you put in sideboard. I, again, I just don't know how many times I've used each one. I wish there were stats on that. I wish I could see the stats on how many times I've taken a specific card out of sideboard. Um, because then I would know what cards to minimize to even get down to seven. That would be nice, but there's no way they would do anything like that to help us. Um, that's obviously something that you would just have to experiment on your own. So I don't know. That's It's going to be odd. I don't know if I want to explore best of three because of that. Because I don't always use sideboards or wishboards, whatever you want to call them. It's interesting. I don't know. Well, I guess we'll see how it plays out. I haven't really heard anything about this, so I'm assuming people just don't care about it. I think it's fine. Then again, a lot of the people that would be loud about it don't play best of one, so they don't really give a fuck, right? Hmm, we'll see. Why are we making this change? Well, cards and sideboard basically have two uses. One is to change your deck in between games and best of three match. Um, to better configure against the deck your opponent is playing. Uh, the other is used in both type of matches, which are frequently called a wish board. A group of cards that can be brought into the game from outside of it, uh, with the card having kind of ability. Yeah. Um, learn in strict. Oh, that was it. Okay, that that was that was their only. Okay. Wait, what? Why are we making this change? And then it just stopped after that? Okay, now I'm confused. Then it just goes to the next paragraph. Maybe it applies. Learn. So the learn mechanic in Strixhaven uh, is a great example of this. Okay, so they do go more into it. In a best of three match, players using cards with learn are forced to figure out how to divide their 15 sideboard slots in between lessons and cards that improve their deck. Exactly. Yeah, that we were kind of talking about that earlier. Um, there would be no reason not to use all 15 sideboard cards, slots on lessons. Um, this is more than would be expected in a best of three match to adjust for the difference. Play design MTG Arena teams arrived at the decision due to limit in the sideboard in a single game matches to seven slots. So basically they're like, we're going to make up this cool new mechanic, but in best of one people will kind of abuse it. So... We're just going to say no before it happens. So, I don't know how I feel about it. I mean, best of one isn't a like a sanctioned thing. Uh, so, I don't think I really care. I think it's fine. It's probably fine. Yeah, it's probably fine. It'll probably be fine until I'm like, fuck! And it, it fucks me super hard. Out of the blue. That's probably what will happen. Players can still use the same decks as they do today for both types of matches. It's fine. Uh, but only seven cards will be in the best of one sideboard. By default, as we convert to this change, it will be the first seven cards listed, but of course you can edit the decks to make it whatever you want, um, or only have seven cards in your sideboard if you just plan on using it for best of one. Uh, the deck builder will more clearly show which cards are sideboard for used in each type of match, as shown below. Uh, so you'll probably see it on the screen somewhere, but... Uh, you'll see sideboard 15 out of 15 and then you'll see seven cards and then you'll see a line that says best of three only and then you'll have the rest of the cards so that's kind of cool that they separate it I like that I actually like that it's still it still kind of sucks I don't have full access to 15 but then again okay it kind of nerfs clover which I like I, I like that it nerfs clover and Faye wishes I like it I, uh, it's acceptable. Acceptable in my book. Yes, absolutely. And we have Ward. Ward is a new keyword. Represents a triggered ability to counter hostile spells or abilities. I don't remember this one. When a creature with Ward is targeted by a spell an opponent controls, that opponent must pay an additional extra cost. Oh, it's like a tax. Okay. Usually, but not always, mana. Okay. Uh, or else the spell or ability is countered. Okay, so Ward is an also an evergreen keyword, which means you can expect to see it come back in future sets. Okay, so Ward is a new one. Okay, yeah, for some reason I didn't even look at these cards. I didn't even see these. When I was going through the cards, I only looked at the rares and mythics because I don't really care about the commons and uncommons. You've all seen my decks. You know, you know that I don't care. So we have one here, Alan Shield Mage, 5 mana, 3-3 three, three flying with a ward of pay 3 life. 
So yeah, whenever a permanent with ward becomes target of a spell or ability, an opponent controls. But this also counts for counter spells, right? Here's ward targeted by a spell or ability. No? Is it not countered? That would be sweet if it was also for counter spells. So like they would also have to pay extra to counter it. Am I not reading that right? I think that's how it works. Counter hostile spells or abilities. Yeah, so it has to be on the battlefield, which is kind of unfortunate. It would be cool if it was like, yeah, they have to pay three life in order to counter the spell, or they have to pay an extra two mana to counter the spell. It's like a built-in, uh, it's like a built-in spell pierce to protect some of your like weaker creatures. Because a five mana three three with flying is fucking expensive. But if it had something to like, anytime you want to counter it, you have to pay three life. Anytime you want to directly kill it, you have to pay three life. That type of thing. Um, so that's interesting. It's kind of interesting. I like I like it, but at the, at the same time, it's it's like a shitty hex proof, and it seems like it makes the card cost more than just hex proof would be. You know? Yeah, I don't know. I don't think I like it. I think it's kind of shitty. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see how it plays out. They said it's coming back in future sets, so maybe they'll tweak it to better its power level, but that's just something we'll have to figure out as time goes on. On MTG Arena, creatures with ward will have prominent visuals on the battlefield. Oh, that's cool. Similar to Hexproof or Indestructible, since ward is a triggered ability, not increased cost to target. The auto tapper will not take it into account. So that's good. Instead, whenever you target the creature with ward, it will get a confirmation pop-up allowing you to decide if you are comfortable paying the price. Okay. So you still have to say, it's almost like if you target your own land with a land destruction spell, it's like, are you sure? Um, or you target any of your own permanents with any type of negative spell. It'll be highlighted in red to indicate that you don't usually want to target it. But if you click on it, it'll come up with the big thing. It's like, are you sure though? Are you really though? Are you sure about that? Um, so that's nice, but at the same time, um, you can't quite debate people. You can't just be like, hey, here's a spell. Do you want to actually kill it? I'm sure you're going to forget that you have to pay extra mana. Kind of like what Raiden is. Uh, so Raiden makes all spells that people cast cost two colorless more. So they'll cast something, uh, or it says, or it's countered. So it's a bit different. But it seems like that's what this is, ward. Counter it unless that player pays that. Yeah, unless they pay the ward cost. So it's it's weird because Raideen mm -hmm. says unless it's... It just gets countered otherwise, so they don't... That's so weird. So it's like it resolves... And then they say whether they want to counter it or not. Maybe. Because I've never actually cast anything into Redeem. So maybe. Maybe that's how it is. Um, but once you cast it, it should start the resolve, the resolution, and then. Because they said Auto Tapper won't take it into account. So. That's interesting. That could be good. I like that. I like it. To an extent. One nuance worth noting. Uh... Even though failing to pay ward cost results in a counter spell or ability, if your spell or ability cannot be countered, you can safely ignore it. Uh, you will still be offered the chance to pay the ward cost in case you want to. Maybe you want to pay life to boost your death shadow for funsies. We won't judge you. Uh-huh, sure, 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 sure. And study break. For the full course on how the mechanics of Strixhaven play out on MTG Arena, as well as some notes on individual cards, we have... More information here. Fucking no. We're good with studying. Strickhaven Mystical Archive. All right, this is the good shit. This is the shit we care about. One of the most striking features of Strickhaven Campus is the Biblioplex. All right. Uh, it said that inside you can find a copy of every spell ever cast in magic, which is the most dangerous and powerful locked away in the Mystical Archive. Tight. Um, all Strixhaven packs, both 15 card limited packs and 8 card store packs, will have a special slot Mystical Archive cards. 15 land, or the 15 card limited packs work as they do in Tabletop Magic. The dedicated slot for Mystical Archive card and the 8 card store packs replace a common. Wait, so you always get one? 
Uh, in either pack, the slot can be either uncommon, 67%, a rare of 24.6%, or a mythic rare at 6.6%. Okay, so that's not terrible. Uh, this means you can open more than one rare or even mythic rare in a single pack. Yeah. Uh, watch out for this when you're first opening your sealed pool. It will still show six rares or mythic like normal. Okay, so yeah, when you open up sealed, it'll just show um, your main six cards because you open up six packs. So it'll show the main, like this is the rare or mythic slot. It'll show just those, but you could have a second mythic or rare that comes in the mystical archive slot um which is cool and it's the same i believe it'll probably be the same when you do the open 10 packs when you just buy packs from the store uh it just shows you the 10 cards that are in the rare slot um it doesn't look like they really talk about that here just says it just talks about the sealed pool so maybe they made it different for that i guess we'll find that out Find more information about acquiring Mystical Archive, don't care. The Mystical Archive cards are also available as special Japanese alternate art variants, which are fucking sick looking. Oh, uh, I wish we had the Japanese alt artwork for War of the Sparks so bad. Some of those are so good. The Ashiok Planeswalker, oh my god, rub the nipples. Uh, uh. MTG Arena, these are available as styles and they can be found in the usual places like event rewards or store bundles. Today's weekly article is more info on where you can find what. Okay, I might have to take a look at that. On MTG Arena, these work like the Phyrexian cell for the Phyrexian Facefucker 5000. When you see them in your hand or collection, they show as the style version. When you mouse over them or tap them or hold the mobile devices, you will see them on the stack. They will show your normal language. So that makes sense. So yeah, it looks like the Japanese alt arts will also show Japanese text, which is actually really cool i do like that but when it's on the stack so when you actually drag it out of your hand uh, or it's on the battlefield and then you mouse over it, it will show it in your native language which is kind of cool it's probably smart that way because then you just play a bunch of japanese cards or some cards that people don't know the language in that you're playing against like if you're playing in an english only tournament for whatever reason nobody knows japanese then you just play all Japanese cards. Everyone's like, I don't remember what that card does. <laughs> and then they just suffer. There's got to be a rule against that on paper, right? Is there a rule against that? I'm actually really interested. Are there any judges watching this? Let me know in the comment section below if there's a rule against that. Like if you have a bunch of different cards, you have some Japanese, some German, some French, some English some Spanish, like, just all over the fucking place. That would be really interesting. And, um, yeah, let me know in the comment section below. Handling forbidden knowledge. Uh, cards from the Mystical Archive will not be standard legal. I already knew that. Uh, unless they already were, of course. Um, but almost all of them will be historic legal. Almost all of them. Well, let's talk more about the almost, shall we? And all these cards seem to be legal in... Uh, draft and sealed as well so you will also want to keep that in mind whenever you go into draft and you see something fucking crazy like dark ritual uh, history and context uh as mtg arena's non-rotating format historic operates much higher power level than standard yeah um but in the broad context of magic there are many formats modern legacy etc that are higher power than historic yes uh, unlike most non-rotating formats in Magic, which generally include the cards after a particular set, Historic is actually a curated format. Is it? Hmm. This means that the card in it includes our chosen deliberately. There are many goals we consider in this process, but our core aim is to create a fun, balanced, and diverse format that we can steadily grow both forward and backward, adding new cards from standard sets, but also more cards from Magic's history. Interesting. See, I was under the impression that they were trying to make it as, uh, as powerful as modern. So I'm not sure if that's actually going to be correct or accurate from what they're saying here, but it's definitely possible. If they're curating everything that's going in there, who knows? When pulling in older cards, we try to choose carefully to avoid upsetting the balance of the format, obviously. 
Adding just a handful of cards that are significantly more powerful than the rest of the format would warp the format around just those cards. Usually, yeah. Uh, ultimately limiting the pool of viable decks. Correct. Uh, Mystical Decisions. The Mystical Archive brings 41 new to historic cards to MTG Arena, including some extremely powerful cards. Yes. Some of these are powerful enough that we know they would warp the format, so we are banning those cards from the start. Which is cool. The list is Channel, Dark Ritual, Demonic Tutor, Lightning Bolt, Swords of Plowshares, Counterspell, Natural Order. Good. Fuck Counterspell. I don't really care too much to go deep into the cards that are banned because I'm a historic player. I don't play paper. I don't do limited. It doesn't really apply to me. It doesn't really apply to the channel much. So, whatever. These cards will all be legal and appear normally in Strixhaven Draft and Sealed, but they will not appear in 8-card store packs until you have collected 4 copies of every other rare and mythics in the Mystical Archive. So that's cool. That's actually really good to notice. Um, so only until you have 4 of every other Mystical Archive rare and mythic will you actually get the other ones that are banned. That's... That's really, really cool. I'm glad that they did that instead of just giving you those ones. So it's almost like it's the same thing with giving you banned cards. <clears throat> they don't give you banned cards in general, like Uro and Oko. So if you go back and buy Eldraine cards, for instance, you won't open up an Oko until you have four of every other mythic in the set. And then you'll open up Oko. So that's actually really good. I mean, that's kind of implied, I suppose. Uh, in that sense, because they already do that for every other mythic, but yeah, I mean, I, yeah, it just makes sense. I was happy about it at first, and I was like, wait, they're already doing that. So, I mean, I'm happy they're still doing it, but I mean, they're already doing it, so it's nothing really all that special. All these cards have a power level that puts them clearly above other options in Historic. If they were legal, the Historic metagame would quickly warp around them. That's probably true for the majority of those cards. Uh, this runs counter to our goals for building a format in a fun and balanced way. Uh, and it would be a huge leap forward in terms of power level rather than measured growth that keeps the format healthy. So that's really interesting. They keep emphasizing the format that's fun and balanced. And their fact that they're only putting in curated cards from older sets. It's, it's giving me hope the fact that they may edit cards um it's it's either they will make cards specifically for historic like historic only cards um like not even on paper or nothing like just magic arena just historic i think they might already have a couple of those if i'm not mistaken but maybe they'll actually do more um or they may actually digitally alter cards specifically for historic like it does this in standard or every other format but in historic does something else i don't actually think they'll do that but they might um they might just take cards that already exist make it more curated for historic or more applicable for historic and just like changing the name of it and then changing everything else that they need to change so I mean, I guess technically that would just be a new card, um, but who knows? Who knows? It gives me hope that they'll treat it more like a digital card game than a physical card game, which I would really, really like. There are many cards in the remaining 34 new to historic cards that could be too powerful for the format as well. Uh, we are taking an approach here similar to the launch of Pioneer, except for the cards above. Uh, we aren't predetermining what is too strong. Wait, are you not? Uh, but we do expect that there will be new decks and interactions discovered that will become problematic. With the cards above, we feel that their power level and threat to the format is clear. And for the rest of the Mystical Archive, we want to let players find the powerful interactions and prove that there are problems for the metagame rather than prejudge the outcome. Got it. So they're keeping a close eye on it and possibly going to ban things coming up yeah who knows could be interesting but hopefully none of my fun cards that i really really want to play and possibly end up being really good end up getting banned so let's hope let's hope this may mean that we need to act quickly to correct some new deck that dominates the metagame or things that develop in more naturally balanced form in either case we will not let threat 
too fun. Wait, in either case, we will not let threats to fun, balance, or diversity persist. That's just a really odd sentence to me. Will not let threats to fun, balance, or diversity persist in the format. Okay, so hopefully that just means that they're going to be very aggressive with bans and changes. With the addition of Stone Rain, I think it might actually be really safe to revisit Field of the Dead being unbanned. Um, I would be in favor of unbanning Field of the Dead, to be honest. I, I worry that it would make Sultai Ultimatum very powerful in Historic, more powerful than it is. It's, or it's like relatively powerful. Uh, it's not as powerful as people make it out to be, but I think it could be much better with that. Um, obviously, Stone Rain kind of keeps it in check, but I don't know how many people would actually be running Land Destruction. I just loved it when people were playing Field of the Dead all the time because I just I farmed them with Land Destruction. Just farmed them all day, all night. Just had them on farm. Super, super easy. Um, but we'll see. Uh, it would be nice for them to unban and reban things as time goes on, especially once they start adding things like mystical archive because i think some of these cards aren't as strong as field of the dead or are stronger than field of the dead rather who knows field trip i love field trips uh rounding out our big news everybody <laughs> mtg arena is now available on phones and tablets we already knew that the player response has been incredible has it though one of our core goals for mtg arena is to get more people playing more magic obviously because your company yeah now that everyone can play whenever and wherever they want to we are definitely seeing that yeah because people want to play magic on it but i don't the response is the numbers of people playing it are high i don't think you're listening to the amount of bugs that there are i haven't heard people say that they've had no issues at all uh if you play on mobile uh regularly and you've had zero issues and everything's fine please correct me in the comment section below i've i've only heard maybe five or ten people in my twitch stream say that they even play on mobile uh and they say they would never go into ranked because of how many bugs there are and they get disconnected from games and stuff pretty frequently um so they just don't want to risk their ranking but uh, that could just be I mean, it's 100% of the people that I've talked to personally. So, I don't know. If you've had different experiences, let me know in the comment section. I'd be interested to know. Putting the full depth and complexity of magic on a mobile device is a challenge, uh, but that is and always will be our plan. We will not be simplifying or reducing any aspect of magic gameplay. Sometimes the interface or layout needs to shift a bit for different devices. But we are committed to ensuring that players on any device can play what they want wherever they are. Oh, there you go. We've made several improvements on mobile already since our early access, such as adding the ability to move cards to your sideboard while drafting on mobile. Couldn't do that before. Enabling social features, that's nice. Uh, improving performance such as a wider range of devices. We're continuing to iterate on mobile UI with the strict save and release. That's good. I mean, obviously fixing the UI, changing the UI to make it a better UI. Um is obviously always good. It's good that they recognize it already um, before it gets too out of hand, uh, including improvements like moving the pet to the right side of the battlefield to clear up views. That's crazy. You could actually just move the pets. All right, sure. Um, clear views of the opponent's lands. One of our next targets here is to enable the horizontal deck builder layout on mobile. That's interesting. See, that's something like you could almost just use Magic Mobile to create decks and then play them on PC. That's something that I didn't even think about until I just read this. That's, I might actually use mobile literally to just put in a deck. Because if I'm on the bed or something and I'm, you know, trying to go to bed or I have some weird deck idea, I have to come back into my living room, you know, turn on my PC and build the deck out before I forget. But I can just load it up on my phone and do it that way. That makes a lot more sense. I don't know why I haven't done that in the past, but 
that's that's good to know. I I didn't even think about that. Yeah, uh, and it's good that they're doing it horizontal, so I don't have to do it landscape every time. So yeah, we'll figure it out. That that seems good. That's a good change. I like that. We've had over 50 million games from players on mobile, and how many of those ended in a disconnect? <laughs> and at least 50% of them, Pog. <laughs> the launch of Strixhaven is a great time to join in. If you log on a mobile device anytime before the end of April, you also receive a special Thopter pet. It's the sound the Thopter makes. Uh, there's never been a better time to find a new way to play Magic anytime and anywhere. This Thopter pet is actually really, really cool looking. I like it a lot. Uh, which I definitely did. And I recommend that you just log in, download it, log in. Especially if you have access to Wi-Fi on your phone. Just download it, log in. You just get your pet and then log out, uninstall, whatever you need. Uh, closing statement. That's it for the Strickhaven state of the game. New set, new mechanics, a new platform to play on on the go. Um, we'll be back with another state of the game, Adventures in the Forgotten Realms in mid-July or whenever we have big news to share. To keep up with all the MTG Arena news in the meantime, you can check our latest or weekly post, Pog. Uh, arriving each Wednesday that will keep you up to date on the events, store offerings, and any other timely news. Until then, may your lessons be easily learned and all your wards hold true. Okay. And the majority of the weekly posts and little things that come up throughout the weeks and the days, uh, all that stuff I go over on my Twitch stream, which is over at twitch.tv slash striderstone. I do stream five days a week, every day except Monday and Thursday schedule. Is in the description below um and so i won't be doing youtube videos on those i'll really only be doing youtube videos on the state of the game the one where it's like big stuff every month uh so you won't have to worry about that but of course if you do want to see more videos like this see because these only come out once a month so if you want to see more hit that subscribe button hit the bell notification i do come out with other videos seven days a week you don't want to miss any of them and as for yesterday's common question of the day i asked you What's your favorite utility land? And it can't be a fetch land. Here are your answers. If you want to get your comment featured in these videos, make sure you answer the comment question of the day every single day, seven days a week in the comment section below. Stay salty, and I'll see you in detention. Thank you all so much for watching. If you made it to this point, it means you either really enjoyed the video or you fell asleep and I'm waking you up now. <laughs> either way, thank you for all the support. I really do appreciate it. If you want to see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification, come out with videos seven days a week.